Good morning, everybody. So, welcome back to Rustic Hills Homestead. We are heading down to do morning chores here on the homestead. It's it's January 1st, 2023, so Happy New Year. Through the gate to the farm. Everybody's down there waiting for us to feed them this morning. You can probably see the goats and the horses and the cows and the pigs. Oh, and don't forget the chickens next to the cows. So, we've got plenty of good treats for all the animals today. It's a little warmer today. It's about 33 degrees right now, which for us at this time of the year is warm. Finished a cold snap of negative 25 with wind chills of negative 55 about a week ago. And we're still kind of recovering from uh, all the havoc that that wreaked. So the last video was Plan M. And that's where we were dealing with all the water issues we were having. But uh, looks like... We're doing okay. I got my plan B water tank kind of back up and running. I believe the hydrant's gonna work today. We shall see. But first, let's get the barn opened up. And I'm gonna try switching you over to a uh, head cam view. So you can see what I'm doing without having to look at me. There's Mickey. She's waiting for her morning treat. Who wants cookies? Mickey always wants cookies. Lady. Here comes Lady. Mickey wants more treats, of course. Sweetie. Yeah, that's a good girl. Yes. And then there's Dude and Roxy. Let's see if we can get them in here. They tend to be a little more shy. Dude! Want a cookie? especially over between Mickey and Lady's pen, and I'll show you a little better in a minute, how destructive horses can be when they choose to be. Come on. So, take a quick walk over here. Into ladies' pen. It's okay, sweetie. I mean, it's okay. And you see how Mickey has chewed all of these two by sixes. She chewed them all up. She even chewed up these four by sixes. Actually, those are two by eights, aren't they? So two by eights and four by sixes. She chewed the heck out of them. I got them this really nice mineral block feeder and she keeps dumping it out because she's too aggressive. Yeah, we're going to have to figure something else out for this, huh? Because you don't know how to behave. Oh. All right, so sort of taking my time this morning a little bit because I wanted to show everybody what morning chores are like. I usually give them their treats. Get the barn cats all squared away with their food so they get one can of the wet stuff that they really love. A big old scoop of the dry stuff that they tolerate. 
Well, I shouldn't say that. They eat it. I think they like the wet stuff better. We ran into town yesterday and I grabbed some cedar bedding for the pigs because I had gotten them some week or so ago and they really like it and they don't push it out as much as they did the straw that I had put in there to keep them warm so I got them some more all right so we got the head cam on we're gonna take the pigs some food and some shavings all the cows are up and walking around and enjoying the morning sunlight we're getting yesterday was pretty overcast today's got a little bit more sun so far the pigs are anxiously awaiting their morning snack Ready? Should I just put it in the in there? There, try that. Oh yeah. So good. And now to keep them from fighting too much. Give them some in the house and spread them out. Good last night, huh? There we go. Let's see. Take some of these bigger chunks out. It looked like it was going to go right through there. brought gloves down all right boys I'll top off their water in a minute You guys eat like pigs. Man. All right. All right. Let's see. Hydrant's working today. I noticed that one of the seals right here leaks when I open the hydrant. And this is a fairly new hydrant, so I'm a little worried about it. Uh, there's not a whole lot I can get done in this weather. As you can see, everything is frozen up. And what happens is, as all that melts, it all melts right into here and 
makes an ice skating rink. So. There we go. they want although they also have one in the barns I think we're gonna hit 37 today was the forecast Fill up the pig's water because that hose doesn't reach and grab the eggs, check on their water and food in the chicken coop. All right, everybody. is starting to thaw out a little bit. I've been adding a little water in there every day hoping that the sun and the water would start to thaw out that big ice cake in the trough. The inside of that water is actually heated but unfortunately those outside troughs there's one on either side. Tell you what, I'll go through there and show you. Look out, look out piggies. Couldn't bring any more food. Yeah, see this one's definitely, that was all frozen. And this was all frozen. That is kept all nice and thawed. So now they've got more water. I'm glad to see that. This is the last, I don't know, week or two? Probably two weeks at least. Those troughs have been frozen so bad I've had to give them water in the rubber buckets, which honestly, I think next year, Next year, I'm just going to do the rubber buckets. I'm not going to mess with this thing in the winter. In the summer, it's great. In the winter, trying to keep water to the pigs is a nightmare. 
So hopefully I got a good angle on this head thing. There's a lot of plans for down here for this coming spring and summer. And I'll outline a few and then I'm going to make videos about each of them as we go. But, so that's our compost heap. That's all hay and poop and the occasional casualty of the farm. This is the pad where dad's hermitage is gonna go. And you notice it is now pretty dug up. And the reason is because I had to dig out trenches for where the plumbing and the electrical is gonna go. All right, so electric is coming from that pole and the main water line that comes from the house down to that spigot comes through here. So I had a plumber lined up to come in and put a T and put another line in here for dad's hermitage and then he canceled on us uh, and that was in the fall we couldn't get anyone else out here and that's i think a part of why we're having so many water problems over there is the main line is more exposed i didn't get all the way to it but it's definitely more exposed and because of that you know our frost line here in northeast wyoming is about six foot but with it being more exposed like that i think it's freezing up in the water line on those really cold days so but we have septic right there we're gonna have electrical and water coming in from there so you'll see us getting all that squared away uh, this coming spring hope i don't fall in here we go all right Ooh. and you can see so the main water line comes from up by the house along this path right over there and i think it's actually probably a little closer to here we uh we tried to witch it and this is what i came up with but i'm guessing it might be a little off to our side so hopefully that'll all get squared away this spring it will we'll get it done I went into town yesterday and I got a new heater. Unfortunately, the only heaters they have are the brand I've been having trouble with. So it was that or nothing, which is kind of unfortunate. I have had a little bit better luck with these. Um, let's see. Submergible tank de-icer. 1500 watts model h429 12.5 amps those have been a little bit better for us i'll tell you what these 1500 watt model h4815 i've gone through so many of those three in the past couple of months and in the past i've had trouble with them so not a big fan but we'll see if this works a little better it already melted the um, ice that was kind of on top last night so we'll see if that helps let me get the hose in here make sure it's closed off yep and we'll top them off I'll tell you what this uh flexible hose has been great this winter as long as we remember to take it in in the bucket so it doesn't freeze through but it makes it so much easier to just grab a bucket instead of rolling up all that you know vinyl hose and then hoping it doesn't freeze and dragging it up the hill so it's laying downhill and all that nonsense this makes it a lot easier i'll need to bring my drill down later and see if i can Put that mineral lick in in a better spot and a little bit more securely i thought i was being smart 
by putting the screws in at a diagonal so that Mickey couldn't knock it off and she still managed to knock it off. I don't have any more treats for you right now. You can chew my jacket all you want, but there's nothing there. You see the horses and even the cows are pretty fuzzy. They do that in the winter. They grow out a little bit more of a coat to help keep them warm. And then in the spring, they'll start to shed all that. Our horses, in case you're new to the channel, we have three Mustangs, Mickey's one, and Dude and Roxy in that first pen over there. I'll show you them again. There are the other two Mustangs. And then Lady, my horse, who's back there, she is a thoroughbred mare that we rescued. Mickey is a sweet horse, but she's very destructive. Hey! See? See her chewing? Mickey! Mickey! When I took the old wood flooring out of here that was just full of nails and all sorts of other things that the horses could have hurt themselves on, I got some sand and I put it underneath and I leveled it out fairly well, believe it or not. And then I put these conveyor belt rubber mats down that were left over from the mine. And I used it over here as well. They work great. Unfortunately, with the horses going in and out, the sand has kind of gone down in some areas and come up in others. At some point, I'm probably gonna have to redo it. And believe it or not, these conveyor belt mats are incredibly heavy, so I'm not looking forward to that so much. Mickey. We had a whole bunch of barn cats. We started out with three and there were some babies. And I had made a little uh, bed house for them up there in the rafters because they like to go up there. And they were using it for a while and now a bunch of them either moved on or got taken out by coyotes. I'm guessing probably the latter. There's one left that I know of, maybe three according to my daughter, but they don't tend to stay in here. The one that I know of has been hanging out over in the hay barn. They come over here to eat because they know where their food is, but they have not really been staying in the barn. I tried to make it warm over the winter for them, but they like the, the hay pile better. The other downside to the cats not spending more time in the barn is the birds have really taken over and you can see bird guano everywhere. Let's get some cake for the cows because we're going to go in there and top off their water next. Cold front will be very upset if there is no cake. Oh yeah, they drank a lot last night. Hey, cold front. Soji. So our cows, if, you, if you're new to the channel, you notice that they're fuzzy for the winter. And these are Dexter cows. Dexters are the smallest breed of beef cow. They're actually a, a tri-use cow. So they can be milked, they can be used for beef, and 
if they're not pulled, ours are pulled, but if they're not pulled, they can also be used as oxen. I obviously don't do that. Let me get Soji a piece of cake. Hey, Soj. Yeah, good girl. Want another one? Want another one? Oh, yeah, you got it. Good boy. And one little tiny one for Soji. Good girl. Always be careful around a bull. He's fairly friendly, but he's young. So he doesn't know the difference yet between playing and trying to hurt somebody. All right, cold front, and especially if he thinks you've got something he wants. I don't have any more, sweetie. That's it. That's all I brought. Not too thrilled about eating the one that fell in the poop, huh? I don't blame you. So Soji, like you may have heard me say before, she's blind. Cold Front's been a, a gentleman and kind of guides her around pretty well. She's our oldest cow. She is going to be going to freezer camp in February. And we're sad to see her go, but at the same time, you know, that's the most humane thing to do for her. And she hasn't, we've tried three times now uh, since she had, no, maybe I'm lying, twice since she had Betsy, who's right here. And we've tried twice to breed her and she stayed open even with a bull now. So we tried AI and then we went and got a bull and he did his job on Betsy and he might have done his job on Lulu. But Soji has, uh, has not been bred again and No. Come spring, we're going to have to take all this bedding pack out of here. And that is not going to be a fun job. I know, sweetie. I know. Yes. Yes. Well, there's nothing in there for you to eat. Here's the water. You found it. I don't have anything else. No, that's just my knife. You don't want that. All right, look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. Like I said, you gotta watch your back around those young bulls. They don't know how much they can hurt a person. Make sure that the goats are okay. I think I'm gonna grab a couple more pieces. Of oh, you know what? I went, there was a scratch and dent bag of goat feed yesterday when we went to the feed store. And because I've been a little worried that the goats aren't getting enough with just feeding a couple flakes or a few flakes a day off the small, um, 
alfalfa bales. I decided to grab this so I could supplement a little bit. They got plenty of water. So I think what I'll do, I'll open this up, I'll put their hay in there, and then I'll dump a little of this in there. Kind of on top, like dressing. Dressing on the salad, right Jane? Look out. Look out. Right. Everybody's gonna rush it. Extra yumminess. So they shouldn't need very much grain. I mean, I was probably a little stingy this time. Maybe I'll do more next time. But uh, let's see how this goes. I don't generally use a lot of grain on my animals. Well, at least not the ruminants. Obviously the chickens um, get grain and the pigs during the winter get grained. They get a lot less during the summer because they go out on the pasture. But Tomorrow, my plan is to give them a new bale of hay because they've destroyed that one. And the cows and Mickey will get a new bale. Almost forgot I gotta check the chicken water. Yeah, they could use a top off. Look at them giving themselves dust baths. <laughs> Good. That means they're happy. All right. Well, let's check the eggs first. One egg. So, if you haven't heard me say this before, chickens lay on a circadian rhythm. And We just passed a week and a half ago, roughly, we just passed the uh, winter solstice. So the shortest days of the year. So right now they aren't laying very much at all. Now, as soon as we hit some longer days, they will pick up and we'll be getting probably 18 to 20 eggs a day. What am I feeding, you ask? This is a mixture of cracked corn and layer crumble. I guess 
I'm done with that. Yeah, I know you'd love to get out there, but believe me, right now there's not a lot out there to get at. Whew. Excuse me. Thank you. All right, happy chickens. over here oh yeah it's not gonna go well is it I just want to turn this off put the pressure out The hose shrink back down. this off. A lot easier than rolling up with standard uh, heavy duty hose that I used to use like. So that's Dude. He's a Mustang. You can see the Freeze brand. That is Roxy right in front of me. And she's also a Mustang. Her Freeze brand's on the other side. Behind her is Lady. She's my thoroughbred mare that we rescued. These are all rescues, but she's the only one that's not a Mustang. And Mickey is in that fire pen over there. You might ask, well, how come Mickey's all by herself? Good, good question. So Mickey's by herself because she was terrorizing Lady and actually kicked her one time and hurt her pretty good. We doctored her up and she's fine now. But uh, Mickey can't be trusted with the other horses. At least not in the pen. They can go out on rides together and they do pretty well, but when they're in the pens, she gets too rambunctious. She's a very high energy horse. So that's basic morning chores. 